Now, Ghana is the second largest producer of yam in Africa after Nigeria, but the largest exporter from Africa. Yam is said to be the second largest as, uh, uh, root tuber after cassava and enjoyed across the board. Now, we exports mostly to the US, UK, and the Netherlands. This means that more opportunities to export more on other areas. Post-harvest losses is, however, the bane as most countries, including South Africa, uh, have banned Ghanaian yam due to chemical residue, which causes early spoilage. This is reducing, you know, quantities and increasing unit costs of yams at the export countries. Even though Ghana has a Grains and Legumes Development Board, which was set up by an Act of Parliament under the Ministry of Food and Agriculture, with some oversight responsibilities on the yam sector, its impact has not yet been felt, given the new levels of competition and technological needs of the sector. So that is what we are discussing this morning. How uh, do we maximize gains on the yam sector send us your views and comments on all our social media platforms tv3 ghana because i've been joined in studio this morning by theophilus kenneth hayford who is the national president of the ghana yam producers and exporters association and also solomon ejeku mensa who is the national executive secretary of the ghana yam producers and exporters association good morning gentlemen mm, good, good morning, morning. Mm. so we have a lot of uh, you know root tubers why specific interests on yam. Let me start with you. Yeah. Uh, the specific interest uh, of yam is that uh, yam is a, a staple uh, crop in Ghana. And uh, yam is also a potential uh, non traditional crop and it earns uh, foreign exchange mm -hmm. uh, and boosts the economy of Ghana. Mm -hmm. And we I'm the president of the Ghana Yam Producers and Exporters Association, mm -hmm. made up of uh, yam producers and yam exporters. Mm -hmm. So the reason why we are here is that we have seen that the yam industry, there are so many problems bedeviling the yam industry. And uh, as uh, leaders of the industry, if we do not act, posterity will judge us wrongly. Mm -hmm. It does appear that post-harvest losses is one of the biggest challenge facing not only the yam, you know, sector, but, you know, for most farmers and, you know, they're faced with the issue of post-harvest losses. I'm told, you know, that uh, over 30% of tubers don't get to the market and a total of 40% uh, get damaged. How can we use government's ongoing uh, planting for food and jobs to bridge that gap? Yeah, we can do that by uh, building collection points at the various uh, yam producing areas. Mm -hmm. uh, about five years ago, the association undertook a trip to all the yam producing areas, mm -hmm. and we saw the need for the building of uh, simple yam collecting, uh, collection points. Mm -hmm. Now, we applied uh, to EDIF, mm -hmm. yeah. But we even our application did not even receive any uh, acknowledgement. Mm -hmm. So the farmers are using the crude method of uh, uh, storing their produce. Mm -hmm. They dig holes, put the yams in, and cover them with the, the, the soil. And you see that uh, when it's time for um, getting the yams up to the market marketing centers, most of the yams would have decayed. Mm -hmm was imagining uh, storing yams on the ground. So this is one of the main problems. So you need, um, you need collection Simple collection points. points. Yes. Uh, we had an a engineer, he designed a very simple collection point mm -hmm. where the yams will be stored mm -hmm. after harvesting. We don't bury them in the ground. The collection points will be built at the farming centers. So you're saying three years down the line since Five government? Five years, yes. We, we were sent in an application Right. Uh, to uh, this, uh, it's now as in bank, it, but it used to be uh, okay. Uh, edif. So the the application was there even before this government came to power. Yeah, yes. Uh, and um, the planting for food and jobs has not looked at resolving this challenge. Yeah. No. It, it hasn't. It has Up until now. It happened until now. Okay. Because we no. sent the application to edif and it wasn't mm. acknowledged. We we 
we, we don't see the need again to, mm -hmm. to do that. Yeah, so we that's why we are here uh, to... Uh, Calling that your council yeah. be, be moved into a board, uh, upgraded yes, into yeah. a board. So we'll come to that, but Theophilus, let me ask you, there's also another challenge with um, planting materials. We're told they're very expensive. Yes. Is that the case? Yes, they're very expensive. You know, the farmers are really struggling to get planting materials. But, um, you know, air both, uh, big thumbs up to them. They are coming up with new improved seeds, and they are trying to get uh, what they call second generation um, seedlings, which will help them produce more um, yam seedlings out of even one tuber. Mm -hmm. So they're working very hard on that to try and get them, you know, yam seedlings on, on a very um, reduced price, mm -hmm. also. Yeah. So, in the meantime, what do they do? They recycle the seeds? traditional way, you know, they're recycling the old seedlings, which they call import, mm -hmm. and then, you know, the way they go about it is the traditional way. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the, you know, they are seizing, you know, they have a time mm -hmm. that they can plant all those. Mm -hmm. And b before that, there mm -hmm. are so many diseases affected, and they, it has been used over and over Oh, okay. yeah. So it affects the quality of quality, the yam. Yeah, the yam. Yes. You know. We have been recycling the uh, seedlings for so many years so and many they years. are susceptible to uh, diseases and pests. Mm -hmm. yeah. And and it's it's the role of government, you know, to provide, you know, seedlings. Yes. But this is not happening. Yeah, no. PPRSD, I know, are in charge of, you know, giving them the seedlings. Mm -hmm. And they the farmers themselves, you know, they have a way of buying the yams, and as I told you, they are the old, you know, yams they use for their yam mini sets. Mm. Yes. Another challenge we're told is soil fertility. You know, um, yam is planted annually, and usually the issue of bush burning and all that does not allow the the, the land to regain its fertility before before planting. How does a board, for instance? ensure that because you're calling that the council that is in place be upgraded to a board yes how does that for instance ensure that we don't engage in bush burning and we don't recycle the same you know planting materials yeah um there are not enough uh, technical offices uh in the uh, yam growing areas and uh, who would uh, i mean advise these farmers on the use of chemicals on the use of uh, 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 the land uh, like a uh, shifting cultivation mm -hmm. and a bush following. Mm -hmm. So with the establishment of a board, they will have uh, the numbers of uh, the technical officers who will be on the field and, uh, I mean, advising these farmers. We went to the north a uh, few days ago, and then uh, I asked a farmer but, uh, how many times his farm has been visited by a technical officer mm -hmm. from the uh, Ministry of Agri. Mm -hmm. And he said, no, he hasn't seen any. And how long has he been farming? Farming for about 10 years or more. And no single no officer single, has yeah, come to no, check no, on no. even his, the way that yeah. his practice, practice. practice yeah. whether That's it is safe. Yeah. 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 So with the establishment, we said we'll come to that. But with mm -hmm. the establishment of a board, mm -hmm. uh, like Coco Marketing Board, we have uh, we will employ more agri extension officers who will go over around uh, to the countryside, to the farms, to advise them mm -hmm. on uh, how to uh, plant their crops um, uh, in a good agricultural practices, mm -hmm. like it's being done in the um, this um, cocoa industry. Mm -hmm. There yeah. are concerns that we are not maximizing the gains uh, with the yam sector. What can we be doing that we are not doing? For instance, we are told that we can, you know, have yam powder. We can, we can use the yam for a lot of things. Mm -hmm. What is the challenge? Let, let me come to you, um, Solomon. Yes. You know, as we have already talked about, um, we can improve, you know, our yams. Not using them as, you know, for food, but mm -hmm. also, you know, as a powder. Um, we have these few guys who tried the yam powder for pizza, and they said it was very delicious. They use yam powder yes, for pizza. Yes, for pizza. Yes. Okay. They were saying it was very delicious. Mm -hmm. We can also do um, maybe frozen mm -hmm. yam chips. Yam okay. chips. I yeah. know someone. I know a friend, Wujanji, who 
who chops the yam, yeah. freezes, and then sells his packaging is super. Yes, wonderful. Yeah. There are so many Ghanaians coming out mm -hmm. with such. But, you know, they're limited because you need to have a, a cooling facility. And most of them are very expensive. I'm sure maybe your friend might have told you. Mm -hmm. They are so expensive. They are so yes. expensive, yeah. Yes. yes. So, so I, I wanted to ask, so what's the challenge? Why can't we, you know, maximize the gains in the yam sector? Yeah. Um, some, somewhere in a... Sometime in 2013, um, we launched uh, a young development strategy document. Mm -hmm. And uh, the putting up together of this document was financed by the International Finance uh, mm -hmm. Corporation. Yeah. It was adored with fanfare. At, I remember it was at the La Palm Beach uh, Hotel. After the adoring, the document has been put aside and uh, gathering cobwebs. Mm -hmm. And the document recommended how we are going to add value to uh, this uh, fresh yams. Mm -hmm. Other countries have come to copy. What we are doing. Yes. Mm -hmm. But the document is still lying there because there is no single body uh, who will take this document and implement the recommendation. Mm -hmm. That is the pain of uh, that is what is that is what is bringing the yam industry to its stage now. Mm -hmm. And if we don't take care, the yam industry will die mm -hmm. a very slow death. Yeah, mm -hmm. So you think that successive governments have not prioritized the yam sector? Yes, uh, successive governments. Take yam as yam, bayre. Mm -hmm. But yam is a potential crop mm -hmm. which, if taken care of mm -hmm. in, in this country, mm -hmm. will develop, will bring foreign exchange earnings, increase the foreign exchange earnings, mm -hmm. uh, and also boost the economy. I mean, if we are the highest, second highest exporter after Nigeria, then we have a lot to, yeah. you know, to do to, to keep the pace. Yeah. Nigeria mm -hmm. is the leading producer, mm -hmm. but we are leading exporters. Mm -hmm. So you can imagine, mm -hmm. we, we, we are not producing that much, mm -hmm. but we're exporting that much. And, and it has to tell you that our yams are very good. Very good. So for our Puna, me, I call them black gold. Because when you send Puna to Europe, our buyers normally ask us to bring Puna. And we have a high price for the Puna mm -hmm. and a much lower for the... Uh, the ordinary ones, the mm -hmm. white yams, mm -hmm. you know. So, uh, yam, you are especially our uh, puna, mm -hmm. should be really taken care of. But I must tell you, mm -hmm. last season, mm -hmm. puna didn't do well at all in the European market. So we had Why? to, we had to halt. Mm -hmm. Spoilages. So Spoilages. We, yeah, because yes. of uh, chem problem, chemical yeah. residue. Yes, yeah. Yeah. yes, mm -hmm. yes. And the good thing is, uh, puna can only be cultivated in Ghana, mm -hmm. the whole world. The world, yeah. okay. Only in Ghana. Mm. Other countries have tried to uh, propagate uh, right. Puna, but uh, I, I, unsuccessful. Yeah. I, I'm very yeah. certain that this discussion will go on, and, mm. and I'm sure government is watching and is listening to your plea. So the, the Yam Producers and Exporters Association are calling on government to upgrade the existing council to a board. They believe that this will help them resolve the many challenges the yam industry is faced with the issue of you know land fertility, the issue of access to you know planting materials, the issue of post harvest losses. And so uh, if you're watching, if you're listening, governments that uh, planting for food and jobs must prioritize the yam industry. There's more on New Day.